Brock Osweiler will start in place of the injured Peyton Manning this weekend against the Bears. Since Manning and Osweiler both joined the Broncos in 2012, Osweiler has taken 150 snaps with only one of those snaps coming in a one-score game, and it was when he took a knee before halftime. Osweiler is taking on a Bears team who is a perfect 3-0 versus the AFC West this season. Stephen A., can Osweiler right the ship for this Chicago squad? I don't know. Well, I don't know if he can write the ship for Denver, but I can tell yes, you this. Yes, Denver. Excuse me. Um, I don't. I, I, I don't think. I don't think he'll have to. Uh, the fact is, is that with Aqib Tlaib coming back with that secondary and that defense going up against Jay Cutler, I expect them to rattle Jay Cutler and to beat Jay Cutler. <laughs> Osweiler just has to make sure he doesn't lose the game for them, according to the numbers that I saw. And you know, since he's been in the NFL, he only threw like thirty. You know, he only threw like thirty passes. Through like two touchdowns, one last year, one this year, just last week against Kansas City and completing 14 of 24 passes. I don't expect them to knock anybody's socks off. I will tell you this. Chicago can beat this team if Denver's running game continues to be what it's been. Ranks 29th in the NFL. C.J. Anderson and Ronnie Hillman really, really have to get it going. They've got to figure out a way to get their running attack going, certainly in this game to take some of the pressure off of uh, Brock Osweiler. But I will tell you that I expect this defense to get the better of Jay Cutler so long as they're put in a position where they could potentially win this game. Um, if, if, if Brock Osweiler sticks up the joint, um, and they can't run the football either like they haven't been able to for most of the season, that Chicago can win this game. But I'm going to bet on Denver that Osweiler, uh, you know, a, a young guy that, that appears to have some promise, although I haven't seen him, I really don't know what he can do yet. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does. I'm going to think that the Denver Broncos are going to run the football relatively effectively this week, that others will get involved and they'll be respectable, and that the defense will score at least one touchdown for them. And I'm going to pick the Denver Broncos to win this game 24-20. to 20. Hmm. Is that more Jay Cutler hate I'm hearing from you? <laughs> sure. 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 That'll never go away. Oh, okay. That'll Thank never, you. That'll, that, that'll, never, that'll never go away completely. I can't help it. I just can't. Guess what? I'm picking Chicago to win this game mm. because the Vandy man can. This is the year. The Vandy man can. Uh, Watch what happens. Uh, Jay Cutler, I don't know if you all have noticed. <laughs> what? He is having his best year as a pro this year. And by the way, his new head coach used to coach the Broncos and his new offensive coordinator who has turned his life and career around used to OC the Broncos. Hmm, interesting. Jay Cutler was drafted by the Broncos. Oh, this is the first time Jay's ever played against the team for which he first played. Hmm, interesting. I kind of like this at Chicago against Brock Osweiler. How much pressure is on this poor kid? He's, he's throw, I saw a stat here. He's thrown 150 passes. Only one has come in any game as close as one score. So all of his passes thrown in the NFL have been garbage time passes, mop-up passes. And all of a sudden, he's taking over a 7-2 and two team. Peyton got it to 7-2. and two. And you're going to be expected to carry on with one of the best defenses in pro football against Jay Cutler at Chicago with all those Denver connections. I, I pity the kid. That's a lot to ask. And I hear great things. I know Gary Kubiak is enthralled with the potential of Brock Osweiler at six feet, seven inches tall. I just don't love his chances against this team at this moment in this city. Because this Bears defense under John Fox, I don't know if you've noticed lately, it's come alive. I have. They're starting to play. By the way, Chicago is 3-0 and against the AFC West so far. Mm -hmm. Not bad. I know they haven't played Denver yet, but they're about to with Brock Osweiler at quarterback. No offense, Brock, but this is tough duty here. I, listen, that Langford kid from Michigan State has also come alive and brought the offensive live. Matt Forte not happy about that. He thinks Chicago is sort of running him out of town, but come on, get over it, Matt. The kid's electric. He, he's given voltage to the offense. Jay Cutler seems to have grown up under Adam Gaze. I don't know what's going on, but he looks like a star quarterback to me over the last four or five games. His QBR is by far the best he's had in his entire career, including the stretch in Denver under the great Mike Shanahan. I'm going with Jay Cutler, and I'm going with him convincingly. I'm going to go 27-17 Bears mm. over Brock Osweiler. 
Mm. Mm. Interesting that you say that. Mm. You got to remember, Chicago, Chicago is fourth against the, uh, you know, I, I mean, I believe they're like fourth against the pass. I mean, I'm just wondering about them right now. I'm just looking at some of the guys in their second day. You got Tracy Porter, Kyle Fuller. That's nothing to, to, to sneeze about. Amos and, and, and Andrew Roll being there definitely has been an asset to them. I get all of that. And John Fox knows what he's doing. He so does. defensively, they can do something. This cause for concern. I give you that. Are you going to change I, your pick? I, I, I'm, I think you're changing nope. on me. Because, no, not at all. Because I'm looking at it from the perspective, Skip, that I think that when you look at Akeem Tlaib and Chris Harris and those boys, and that secondary in Denver, They're good. plus their ability to get to the quarterback with Vaughn Miller scheduled to be stalking Jay Cutler, I really believe in my heart of hearts mm -hmm. that they can have they can, they, they can do some things defensively to, to really rattle Jay Cutler. We'll see what happens, but I don't blame you for going with yours. I'm going to stick with mine, though. I think Denver's defense is going to save the day for them against Jay Cutler. I refuse to pick Jay Cutler to win a game like this. I know it can happen, but I, it just ain't in me to do it, man. It ain't Got in it. me to do it. Love it. All right, so Stephen A's rolling with Brock. Skip is going with Cuddy. The Bears are favored by one in this one, and everybody should be betting on Steph Curry. By the Curry. way, FPI favors the Bears. You believe in that? No. FBI? I, 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 they do? I believe a little more in Vegas, They give them a 56% chance. Okay, so we're going FBI. It's a good shot. Oh, by the way, by the way, guys, remember, Skip, Chicago is 24th in the league in points allowed, but 7th in yards allowed, which gives me the indication that their offense is giving up some stuff, and as a result, D, you know, opposing offense is able to score due to good field position because somehow, some way, Jay Cutler's going to find a way to mess things up. Just wanted to throw that out there. You better hope mm. so. Mm -hmm. You know who's dominating every statistical category? Steph Curry. Staples was on fire last night, and Chef Curry was cooking. The high praises for Steph keep coming in. We'll react to that one on the other side. First Take is brought to you by Joseph A. Bank, the answer to quality men's attire since 1905. And Five Gum Truth or Dare, are you game? You guys always say that I'm obsessed with them and all that. You guys are obsessed with them, not me. <laughs> but you're the ones who talk about them every single day. We prepare uh, for them the same way we prepare for every team that we face. Do I obsess with them and all that? You guys write about them. Yeah, I've lost seven of eight, so why are you even talking to me? We got no business being on the same field. That's what you said. I've lost seven of eight against them, so don't talk to me. Rex Ryan getting testy with the New England media during a conference call on Thursday. Skip, what's your reaction? <sighs> Stephen A., my reaction as a Brady fan is it scared me. I thought that was real. I thought that was Rex at his best. Rex at his scariest to me, again, as a Patriot supporter, is not you know, showman Rex, carnival barker, look at me Rex. It's angry Rex. And that was legit anger there. And I'm going to tell you, I'll, I'll preface what's going to happen Monday night in Foxborough by telling you the scariest game to me left on the schedule is not at Denver, it's not at Jets, it's not even at Dolphins that last game. It's this one on Monday night in Foxborough because I think the team built the best with the right attitude and the right quarterback to upend Tom Brady and company and their 16-0 and pursuit will be this team and, and this coach in this mindset. That's fair enough, but I think one of the things you're missing, Skip, is that that anger that Rex Ryan feels inside of him, you know, he's a bit delusional or trying to give off, you know, delusions of grandeur when he talks about how he's not really paying attention, you know, to the fact that, you know, he's not he's treating them like any other team. They're not any other team to him. They're a team within his division that has dominated him since he has been a head coach in the NFL. They've beaten him eight of the last nine times. They keep winning division titles at his expense. And he came into the NFL as a, as a head coach talking about how he's not here to kiss Bill Belichick's ring. Yep. And everybody remembered that. So it's those kind of statements that have come back to haunt him because he's had no choice but to kiss the ring because since Rex Ryan has been a head coach, the Patriots have been to two Super Bowls and have won one. And he and they, we, and they keep winning the division every year where that's not the case for him. So they're not only successful, but they're successful on his watch, within his division, yep. and all the bluster and bloviating has amounted to nothing. And nobody highlights that, the ineptitude of Rex Ryan, better 
than Bill Belichick and okay. the Patriots. I, I hear you, but the, the one coach who has tormented Tom Brady over the years the most is clearly Rex Ryan. Now, he did bloviate ahead of the game early this year at Buffalo, and he got it stuffed right back in his face by one of the great Brady regular season performances of his entire career. But it was 40 to 32. Tyrod scored mm -hmm. 32, some of them late. But Tyrod, I, I don't think he's afraid of Tom Brady in his own way. That's true. But they were down 37 to 13 before New England got a little lackadaisical. But Come on, three man. of those TDs, half of those total yards are from players that can't go. Julian Edelman, Dean Lewis. So we will see. Bingo. See you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend.